Hey, what is going on guys? I'm Red Stealth here, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how the rank 1 Samira player is dominating solo queue with an 81% win rate so far. This isn't just over a few games either, he's currently 26 wins and 6 losses only on Samira, so he's been doing extremely well. We're going to be taking a look at how he plays the champion along with the unique setup he's been running that's very sleeper OP at the moment, so with that being said, let's get right into it. So first here, I want to break down a few things setup related that he's doing a lot differently from your average Samira player. So build wise, he's prioritizing a Bloodthirster as a third item instead of Death Dance. Death Dance seems to be a bit of a noob trap item right now on Samira for a couple different reasons. The first is that both Samira's Q and Ultimate apply lifesteal at 100% effectiveness. This means the healing you will be getting from Bloodthirster is completely insane. Now you may be wondering, well doesn't Death Dance also get that 100% effectiveness from Lifesteal? And the answer is no. Death Dance actually doesn't have Lifesteal. You heal for 15% of the damage you deal, which isn't Lifesteal and therefore doesn't synergize with Samira's Q and Ultimate. You also gain less value out of Death Dance heal because both Samira Q and Ult are AoE abilities, so they can only heal 5% for every unit affected instead of 15%. So I'll show you guys some gameplay here in the background as to just how insane the healing really is out of the Bloodthirster. So first here, we'll take a look at the healing coming out of Death Dance. And as you can see there, you know, with your full combo with using your ultimate, the healing is pretty negligible for the most part. It's really very lackluster. But if we take a look at Bloodthirster, you end up healing from pretty much no HP at all there, all the way up to 100% with your full combo, which is just so much more sustained than the Death Dance provided. Now you do have to consider that you are getting magic resistant armor from Death Dance along with the CDR and the bleed over time, so you can't completely dismiss the item just because it doesn't heal as much, but even stat wise right now, Bloodthirster just performs so much better. I took a look at stats across different elo brackets and different regions and throughout every single one, Bloodthirster performed better than Death Dance stat wise. So if you have yet to try out Bloodthirster, you know, as a third item on your Samira, then I'd definitely give it a shot. It's not to say that Death Dance is completely terrible, but it just seems like Bloodthirster is the more optimal option at the moment. And then if we just take a look here at the three most popular builds going around on Samira, so Essence Reaver into Infinity Edge is going to be standard pretty much every single game. That seems to be the best two core items on her at the moment. But as for your third item, it's either the Bloodthirster, the Death Dance, or the Phantom Dancer. So Bloodthirster does perform a lot better right now stat-wise across every single elo, across, you know, every single region. Death Dance does perform significantly worse. Like, as you can see there, 55% win rate from the Death Dance setup, as opposed to the 62% you're getting out of the Bloodthirster. And then there for the Phantom Dancer, that's the most popular build right now actually over in Korea, uh, but you're not getting any lifesteal from that build. Um, so you're not, you know, benefiting from the 100% effectiveness. Your ultimate provides you from lifesteal and your Q provides you. So I definitely think that as the patch, you know, does progress and as people, you know, start to figure out what's best on Samira, the Bloodthirster build is just going to skyrocket in play rate and we're going to see it used a lot more. But right now you can try out these three different builds, see which one you do like the best. But the one that the best Samira player is going for right now is that Bloodthirster third item setup. Now, another thing he's doing differently in his rune page is he's taking domination secondary instead of the sorcery. Now, as you can see here, most players are taking sorcery secondary right now. 51% of players are taking that, but they're only achieving around a 48% win rate as opposed to the domination secondary. 30% of players are taking this, but they're getting about a 4% better win rate at about 52% right now. So we'll break down here as to why domination secondary is actually a lot better than sorcery. So by running the Domination Secondary there, you're going to want to take the Taste of Blood and the Ravenous Hunter. And the Ravenous Hunter is the really key one there because you're going to be healing for percentage of the damage dealt by your abilities, right? So your ultimate, your Q are going to be healing you for a ton. And with the Ravenous Hunter combined with, you're also going to take Bloodline there in the Precision Tree along with the Bloodthirster. If you have those three different things in your setup, your Q, your ultimate, just your overall healing is going to be absolutely ridiculous once you do hit your three items spike. For the rest of the runes there, you can look to swap around like Presence of Mind and Triumph if you prefer one or the other. You can also swap up Coup de Gras for, you know, Last Stand or Cutdown depending on the game, but the staples to this rune setup here are the Bloodline and that Ravenous Hunter. You just want to make sure you're taking those two every single game on your Samira. 
And then I guess the last thing to go over setup wise is your ability maxing. So it's going to be pretty standard as to what most players are doing. It's going to be Q first into E second and then W last. About 20% of players are going for W max second at the moment, but you don't want to be going for that. E max second does perform a lot better at the moment. So look to, you know, swap over to that if you are somebody who is maxing W out second. Okay, and then moving on to how you should be looking to play Samira, you know, first throughout the early game here, as you can see there in the background gameplay, at the level 3 you do have some really good all-in potential, and especially if you are paired up with a good aggressive support, just look to play for that level 3 all-in. With your spell shield there, it makes it very difficult, you know, especially if the enemy AD carry has, you know, a skill shot ability in their kit, you know, you can just block that with the spell shield, and it just makes it really difficult for the enemy to win a trade or win an all-in against you at the level 3, so if you can just look to play for that in your games, you know, be on the same page as your support, ping ping forward when you hit the level three and just look to play aggressive, look to go all in, then you're going to find yourself picking up a lot of early kills on the champion. Now be aware that you can dash through minions with Samira's ease, so if the enemy is, you know, playing too far up in lane, if you end up chunking them out and you're able to zone them, a lot of the time what you can do is you can just sit back a little bit in lane and the enemy will think they're in a safe position, but then you can, you know, just dash through the minion and get right on top of them, so you should be looking to, you know, bait the enemy in if you do end up chunking them out in lane and then dash through the minions to punish them. This also makes your tower dive ability at level 6 really good as well because if you do have a minion wave under the enemy's tower, you know, you can look to dash in, get the reset, and you can dash right out through minions. So when you are diving, it's just really important that you're paying attention to, you know, where the minion wave is and look at your potential escape route after you do end up picking up a kill. And then once you hit the team fight stage with this champion, it's all about finding that opportunity to jump in with your ultimate and just clean up a team fight. So you should be looking to, you know, stack up your S grade from the back line. And then when you have your S grade, when you have your ultimate, look for that opportunity to jump in and find a reset. Or if the enemy team has already, you know, wasted all their CC abilities, they don't have any cooldowns anymore. You can just jump right in there, use your ultimate, and you can just clean up team fights so well with this champion. Now, if you're looking to play with a duo partner when you're playing Samira, then pairing her up with any aggressive support is going to be your best bet. So taking a look at the rank one Samira's match history, it seems like the most games to where he popped off is when he's playing with either, you know, a Nautilus, a Leona, a Pantheon, any of these aggressive supports are so good with the champion because you're all in at level three is just super deadly. Samira's, you know, passive as well, being able to extend that crowd control duration makes it really strong when you pair her up up with those aggressive supports so the Leona the Nautilus Pantheon you know Rakan Alistar those are five of the best you can look to play with her at the moment all right so that is going to be all for the video guys you should now have a really good idea of how you should be looking to play Samira throughout the game along with the best setup you should be running on her at the moment so if you guys did enjoy this video then be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you have yet to already so thanks for watching have an awesome day and I will see you in my next video